in early 1980s, uh, I had done some mineral research as to trying to find large pure deposits of silica. It was an extensive undertaking into doing uh, geological studies and and uh, talking with the Department of Geology and other timber people who were in and out of the woods in different areas of Southern Oregon. Uh, and they had indicated that uh, at this particular geographical location that there was a whole lot of white rocks, as they put it. And uh, so I continued to, to study and to, to search out the area and finally zeroed it down to locating this. The claims consist of about 460 acres of uh, mineral holdings and uh, it's one of the largest silica deposits uh, west of the Rocky Mountains. And filed on these claims uh, under the mining laws of the United States and uh, have had them in my possession since uh, uh, early 1985. We were uh, told by the regulatory agencies that we had to have a, an approved plan of operation and we went through all of the appropriate filings to do that. Uh, there was an extensive amount of, of time and effort on the regulatory agencies to do their environmental studies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it became very apparent very quickly that there was a whole other agenda behind this. The, the federal mining law state very clearly that the regulatory agencies are to aid and assist in mineral development, and that's part of the mining law. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, it has been anything but aiding and supporting uh, the development. When once you apply for a plan of operation, uh, the law says that they have to give you an answer within 30 days and then that that's to be approved within a 60 day period of time. And we've been 24 years trying to get this project up and, up and going and it's been in and through delays. Uh, they have claimed they had to do this study and that study. It's been uh, archeological studies, it's been fish and game studies, it's been air pollution studies, it's been hydraulic studies. And the sad thing about that whole concept, none of that applies here. We're not next to any river, we're not next to any lake, we're not in, close to, in, we're 12 miles from a major highway here. We don't have any water pollution problems with this. Your filtration sand that's in your water treatment plant down in, in Medford is made from silica sand, the very thing people are fighting, the very thing they depend upon to get clean water every day. Instead of the, the regulatory agencies of saying yes or no, whichever the case is, they never say no, but they won't say yes either. And their no is implemented by virtue of a constant delay. Their intent, and which has worked in many instances, of, of, uh, to wear you out, to discourage you simply by attrition, put you through the hoops, put you through the, the meat grinder, if I can use that term. And they use that and have learned to use that method very effectively. They have done everything that they can to stymie this operation that has high paying jobs, that, the end product is what every one of us need and use on a daily basis. And, you know, if you brush your teeth, you use a silica product. If you drink out of a drinking glass and telephones and cell phones and computers and on and on and on. We identify much with the timber industry who's been subject to the same type of roadblocks and stumbling blocks and excuses and legal maneuvers, whatever. Uh, but we've just, we have a legal team that's done years of study into the mining law, and uh, so we're very, very close to implementing those steps necessary to get this, this valuable resource uh, up and in production and get people put back to work.